Hello everyone, welcome to another quick card making class and today project and today we're making this little cute thank you card. So I already stamped the thank you so much on the inside with a couple hearts and stars and these are actually from a set that was available as the stamp of the month in January. Here's the thank you, here's the so much and then we use the stars and the little heart to cover it. Um, the main piece of paper, I ran through an embossing folder, which we had, um, it's like, I think it was called Subway Tile, but you can do flowers, anything you have on hand. And that paper is cut at four by five and a half. So it is kind of flush, flush with, flush, <laughs> with the sides, left and right, but it leaves a little border on the top and on the bottom. So there you go. Next thing, we have those cute little flags here and they're actually cut from leftover pieces. So if you have quite a few leftover pieces, perfect. Um, they're cut uh, one inch by three quarter inch. And on the one inch side, I made a, a little um, reference line at half, so half an inch. And what we want to do is we cut from the tip of that line to the one side. And you see I do a couple at the same time. And then we do from the same tip to the other corner. And here we have our triangles. And I already did the others. So we just flip them over so we don't want to see the, the line. And then we just place them so they fit on our card. Let's see what we got here. Okay. So then we just arrange them so they're kind of like. Here's a good example. So um, this is the line here and normally you would place it this way, but for some reason the triangle is a little bit shorter since it's not even sided. So I just turn mine so the pointier side is facing down. It's not a big deal, but while you're at it and you might see it, you might want to do it. Okay. Now we just, and I use just liquid adhesive because it's such a small area. If anything comes out here, there you go. And we're gonna start with one here, then place this one. And I raised like every other one with a few foam dots. So this middle one here is raised. I got adhesive on my finger, now everything sticks. Okay. And here it goes. Voila. Now we do the next row. And it doesn't really matter. Oh, you place them down. If they're a little bit crooked, that's fine. They're just blowing in the wind. It doesn't have to be perfect. Here's another one. And then we have one more. And the other two in between, I will raise two. So there you go. These two we will raise. is it what you have to do with the banner so it's really fast and easy uses up some of your scrap papers and it's just a cute little 
idea to decorate your card. You can use this for birthdays. I mean, there are so many ways where you can use this design. Okay, now on to our little gnome. And let me make sure I'm in the picture. Okay. <clears throat> so this gnome is colored in with watercolor pencils. And if you never work with them, they're really awesome and quick and easy to work with. First of all, that stamp is from the stamp set Gnome Matters. Uh, we might still have it. You have to go on my website, go in the shop, go uh, on the bottom at online only and see if it's still available. If not, we have two other sets which have really cute gnomes in it. They are available and you can, um, like this one here, you can use either of those. It doesn't have to be that one, just so you know, so check them out. Okay, so our little gnome here and he is a little bit off um it's not a big deal this looks better so i usually what i normally do is um i cut my paper through the die cutting machine first because these things come with matching dies they're in here and i cut my white paper first it's just our plain plain uh, daisy white cardstock and um then I stamp on it. Since they are clear stamps, it's easy to look or see through. Once in a great while, I get a little bit off. Like this one is a little bit off here at the edges, so I might just cut around it at one point and take, you know, change this up a little bit. But um, this one here is better. It's more in line, and it is stamped with either your regular Momento ink or our Black Archival ink, um, and just let it dry really really well so um talking about the watercolor pencil so this is our new watercolor pencil set the old ones look like this and i have multiple packs um i already had some of my faber castell ones but then i got the close to my heart ones and i have these new ones they work great. Um, there are some watercolor pencils out there where you have to be a little bit careful when you color with them and how you sometimes have streaks of um, color on a paper and you go over with the water, they might not dissolve as good. So these work really well. And you don't need a lot of colors because you can mix them and you can also use them as plain Jane coloring pencils if you want to but if you're using them in watercolor pencils um what we're gonna do is we're gonna color them in first with the pencils and then we go over with some water and i show you a trick so this is regular cardstock no watercolor paper regular cardstock regular black ink and we start coloring so what i like to do is um i do a little bit shading too so his nose for example underneath here it's all gonna be dark but on the top here it's a little bit shiny because normally when you do something like this you always think of the light coming from the top so the head is gonna be everything that's um sticking out or where this his light hits on top is gonna be lighter so his nose on top here is lighter his ears on top would be lighter too which is kind of hard because they're so tiny so not a big deal his hand we just color in and that's all that is because this is his beard so we don't color that one in now um the flowers are really tiny so we just give them a good color here you won't see much of a difference when we go over with the water here's a green and while we have the green we start with our pants so the pants so um you have to think about this is his um jacket overlapping the pants so which means underneath here it's gonna be nice and dark so we put a little bit more color on here and then where the legs go together and where this crease is too the rest we leave open yes it looks weird but we leave it open we don't color everything in no the shoes so the shoes are uh have a little um cupola or whatever you want to call it top here that is going to be lighter because the shoes are sticking out so i just put my brown color on the bottom and don't even touch the top there the belt so from the sides here it's kind of in the dark but it's getting lighter 
the more to the front we go and then we put his belt buckle in here and that's all the brown we need now to the jacket so the arms are on the back side so they're a little bit in the shade or in the dark so we can cut, color them in they're tiny now the front so underneath his belt it's going to be darker and then towards the outer side it's going to be lighter because you know your your fabric is kind of bouncing out a little bit so it's going to be lighter down here darker here and for the belly so the belly is round too if i would color everything in it would be flat so um we're gonna make the belly a little bit round so it's gonna be darker down here it's gonna be a little bit darker on the side and for sure it's gonna be darker underneath his beard and then we leave the middle open now the last piece is our head so this little piece here is kind of folded over it's really dark the tip is darker and then we are getting a little bit lighter here and as I said before the top should be really light so we leave that I'm gonna put a little bit of color here down the side here's a big crease so it's gonna be dark here it's darker on this side because the head is shining throwing a shadow on here and then usually the rim because it's got little folds and everything in there it's gonna be darker too so we just put a little bit more color in here and that is all the color I'm gonna put on there and you go like you're crazy <laughs> that doesn't look good well it doesn't look good yet so let's grab some water and let's talk about the watercolor pencils so um, if you don't have one of these that's fine you can use a regular pencil that's what I know a uh, brush sorry watercolor brush um, if you don't have one of these you can use just a regular brush smaller one would be great um, but I'm gonna demonstrate this with a regular brush that we have so this is one of our watercolor um, tank brushes and normally you would unscrew this and you would fill this part with water screw it back on and then the nice thing is when you use it you squeeze water out and it comes directly out here cleans out your brush and everything now over time these things have the tendency to lose some water while you're coloring and um, there is nothing worse than having too much water when you're doing this on regular paper like I do here and you're just wanting to add a little tiniest bit of water so what I like to do is I take my brush I dip it in a little bit of water and you can actually use a shot glass you don't even that's way too much water and I like to wipe it off of my hand and I don't know if you can see this but there is like almost no water on here and I want you to rub it a couple times and um, feel how little water you have on that brush because that's all we need it's like when you're testing the milk of your baby you know to make sure it's not too hot this is the best way to to test and find out now um, let's start with the flesh tones so all I do is I go in here where I put the color down and use my little brush and move the color a little bit smudge this out and it's hard to see with the with this flesh color here so I just pull it up a little bit and there is a little shiny part here and this is way darker now let me show with the yellow um, all it does is it intensifies the color a little bit that's all you will see here with the flowers and if I think it's not enough water I'm just going back in the water a little bit here's the green and let's go in the with the belt so here's our color so I'm gonna start in the back here and I just pull it down here see how it picks up the color activates it and just pulls it up belt buckle and here we go the shoes I think that's the one where you will see it the most is like I activate the color here and then I just pull it up so we're getting lighter and lighter same here see we're getting lighter and lighter and the thing is I um, the only time you want to be a little bit in staying in the line and be careful is when you use the water so you don't go back and forth over those black lines that you stamped that might at one point dissolve them and but um, 
otherwise you're fine if you just use a little bit of water and you can see how it kind of like gives it a three dimension let's do it's just hard to do it in the air but i try my best let's do one of the legs so here we're activating the green and see how much color is on here and you can see how dimension how much dimension it gets because of the light and dark colors that are in here okay now it looks like he has little crinkles and let's do the arms so the arms we colored in completely but still you see some of the lines from the pencil and we can smooth those out with the brush and you don't need to um, go back and forth in the water I just need to catch up a little bit and here are the lines gone and then we pull the color down a little bit and there you have it and let's do the top part and you could push the color around a little bit with your brush tip so see how this is a lighter area and the rest is a little bit darker and you can do it as dark or as light as you want now to the head we're doing the same thing so we're kind of like starting to dissolve the color down here and push it up towards the tip of the head little bit more water here that's a bigger piece to cover and then we do the side here it's really fun it's just a different way of using color and most of the stamped images just look better when they're colored in so here we go and you don't want it to be super even and all in one color because when you do that it's just a flat object you need the highlights you need the lighter and darker areas to make it look like it's a really a form so i'm happy with that i don't even fuss with it so this is all we do color wise now i did give him a little smile and two eyes and that's really simple i just did a little squiggly line and two check marks on either side and there is my little gnome with a smiling face so all that's left and as you can see it's still not warped it's still nice so we really use just a tiny little bit of water and that is the key if you are using uh, watercolor pencils on regular cardstock which you can as you just saw um, just make sure you don't go over and over and over with a wet brush because the paper will dissolve at one point in time but if you just activate the color and push it around a little bit um, you're good to go and second don't bother coloring everything in just put a couple nice highlights in there and then use your brush and water to push it around and I should next time I do one where I just do everything flat everything in one color and then we're gonna do one next to it where you can see a little bit more of the light and dark okay last thing we have to put on some of our bling here got these little pearls and I know some of you might have a picker upper tool or use their um, tweezers I'm not good with tweezers tweezers and rhinestone or pearls don't go together with me they fly everywhere but none of them ended up on the project okay one more here I got one pearl missing but I will add this to it at the end and that's pretty much all I did with this card I did use one of those gel pens that I have laying around forever and just added a couple little dots um, around these here 
which you don't have to do, but it's just a fun way to add some extra interest. And um, you can do little bows here at the end. that is it so i hope you enjoyed this little card and stay tuned there will be more cards to come thanks bye bye